Okay, so welcome back. This is part nine in our ongoing series, our YouTube playlist, where we look at developing an application that does 3D ray tracing using your GPU. And I encourage you to look at the previous videos in the series. Uh, we started out talking about putting together a simple application that um, does fairly complex uh, ray tracing using shadows and blur effects and reflections. And um, in subsequent videos, we looked at addressing some of the shortcomings of that um, application. We looked at being able to render to a window as opposed to the um, base application, which just um, saved an image to file. So we used SDL to render to a window. And in subsequent videos, we looked at some other uh, aspects of ray tracing. We looked at the vector classes. Um, we also looked into CUDA, which is the NVIDIA API, which allows you to do the ray tracing on your GPU. And then more recently, we looked at this um, application, which addresses one other uh, shortcoming of that um, initial application. And that is that it merely uh, ray traced some spheres. And spheres are very simple to ray trace since they can be defined by a simple equation. Uh, in this application we started working on recently, we made it so that we could do ray tracing of a more complex object. And you can see here where we've got this teapot, which is a fairly complex object. And we are doing a very simple ray tracing. We don't have a lot of the other features, but we are showing how to do um, ray tracing of a um, complex object. And um, in the last video, we looked at some of the features of Visual Studio. We're doing this in Visual Studio and C++. We looked at one of the surprising features of Visual Studio that allows you to build and edit objects, 3D objects in Visual Studio. So I encourage you to look at that. And in this video, we are going to address another one of the shortcomings of, of this application, which is that it uses a custom format. So you can see here, we've got this teapot that has been defined in a custom format called a .geo. And what we want, and we're going to address in this video, is we want an industry standard format called a wavefront object.obj file. And what we're going to do in this video is, is show how to put together a simple obj file, an object, and we're going to look at how we can read that into this application and render a custom object that we build in like Blender or even in Visual Studio. So here's where we left off in the previous videos. We're um, looking at uh, Visual Studio. We're in Visual Studio 2022. And we have here the code that we got from scratchapixel.com with the modifications we made previously. Again, we are now rendering to a window rather than to a file. We will run this in release mode. And you can see it tells us what percent we're done of rendering the teapot. And after about 20 seconds, we're going to get the rendered teapot image. And this is going to address one of the things that we want to fix about this um, code. It takes quite a while, and we're in release mode. Um, it takes quite a while to get this render done. So we're going to be investigating how we can set this application to read OBJ files. And instead of uh, waiting for this to render, we want to replace it with a very simple cube. So one of, the, one of the first things we're going to do is figure out how to, instead of render this teapot, render a simple cube so we can have a very fast render and at the same time we can figure out with a very simple object how to integrate that OBJ file into the existing code and do a render of that. So previously we modified our code from scratch a pixel to add regions so we can have simple drop downs to make this a lot easier to see this code. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the main entry point. And here is the entry point. We added this SDL window initialization so we can render to an SDL window. And if you scroll down here, you can see what we're going to focus on in this video, where we have this line where it, it runs the load poly mesh from file and it loads this teapot.geo custom format. 
and it assigns it to what's called a triangle mesh. And this is a pointer to a triangle mesh. And that basically allows them to take this tpot.geo and create a mesh that it can then go through and render. So let's take a look at what this triangle mesh is. So if we go back to the methods and classes, you can see that we've got a definition of the triangle mesh, and also we have a definition of the load poly mesh from a file. And you feed it a file name and a four by four matrix, and it goes through all of this, but at the end of the day, it returns a triangle mesh object. So what we need to do is we need to modify this load poly mesh from file so that it will load the um, OBJ file, but make it uh, into a triangle mesh object. So we're going to have to figure out how we can make all of this work with an OBJ file. So let's first take a look at the scratch -a pixel website to see what this um, .geo file format really is. So here's the website we talked about before, and I'm in the Introduction to Poly Meshes section. And if you, if you go down, you can see it explains what the file formats are to store polygon meshes. And they talk about OBJ, FBX, RenderMan, and then they talk about this .geo. So if you scroll down, you've got the OBJ file, which is what we're going to be using. And they talk about Filmbox FBX. And then here they talk about writing their own file format, the .geo. Thankfully, they give us a um, .geo file for a simple cube. So really nice. We can just take this save it as a .geo, .geo text file, and this can be the input to our um, application, and we can compare that to a um, cube object with the same dimensions that we build in either Blender, or as we showed in the last video, we can build it in Visual Studio, and it will give us a very simple object to use as a template to figure out how we can do the same thing for a .obj file. So right below this, you can see there is an explanation of what the numbers mean. The first number defines the number of faces. So you can see since it's a cube, there's six faces. Second and third lines is just a series of integers representing the face index and vertex index arrays. So that's this with the fours and the zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this gives you a indication of the indices of the faces and vertices. Here in the fourth line is the XYZ coordinates of each vertex. And you can see it's minus one, 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 one. So that's going to tell you that we're, we're looking at a cube that's probably two meters by two meters by two meters since it's uh, centered at the origin and it's plus or minus one in either direction. So um, really all we have to do is go into Blender and make a um, two meter cube centered at the origin. We should be okay. Here's the normal data, the zeros and ones and the minus ones. And then the last line is just um, texture coordinate data, which we don't care about too much. I explain in another series about um, UV mapping, what all that means. So we won't go, about, we won't talk about that. But it, very basic um, information in this geo. And if you look at the OBJ file, uh, as we explained in other videos about um, 3D objects, it's basically vertex data, uh, location data and uh, normal data, texture coordinate data right here, and then face data with all the indices. So all we have to do is just select this, copy and paste into Notepad++ or whatever, and save it as cube.geo, and we can then move that into our project file, and we should be ready to go. So here we are back in our project, and you can see I've added cube.geo, and um, we're pretty much all set to go. What we can do is we can render that cube.geo instead of teapot.geo. We go down to this where we load the poly mesh from file, just change that to cube.geo, and hit render, and hopefully we get a nice simple cube. And there you go, you got a cube, it took 0 0.06 seconds. So this is going to be a lot nicer to work with 
um, rather than a very uh, long render. And also, it's going to be a very simple object that we can look at uh, implementing, in, implementing in .obj format. So we talked in the last video about how we can actually use Visual Studio to make and edit 3D objects and images. So briefly, we're going to go through how to do that. Um, in this, we just go to the project, right click, add new item. And you can see that we have graphics as an option now. And what we can do is we can add a 3D scene, a film box FBX scene. And that will allow us to make a uh, cube OBJ file. So we're just going to leave the default name seam.fbx, add. And here we are with a blank scene that we can now create a cube, which we can save as an OBJ file. What we need to do is go to this toolbox over here. And um, if you don't have this toolbox, go to uh, view toolbox and select that and you should get this on the left you should get this toolbox click on that and you have choices for materials but you can also add a cone a cube a cylinder disc plane sphere and teapot so we're going to add a simple cube so we double click on the cube and here we have a cube all set to go so we've now just created a cube. We can rotate around as we showed before. Um, and what we can do is save this as an OBJ file that we can then load in later on. So all we need to do to save this object is go to File, Save Scene.FBX As. And here we have some options. We can, instead of having film box, we can save it as a .obj. And we're going to leave it as scene.obj and hit save. And it will have saved it into our, into our project. You can see we've got scene.fbx. But if we go to all files and refresh, now we've got scene.obj. And also it gives a scene.mtl, which is the material. So I can double click on that object or I can look at it as a text file in Visual Studio. I select it. And I can right click, open with, and if I go down to source code, text editor, double click on that, here is my cube that I just built, my scene.obj cube in OBJ text format. And you can see it's got all the vertex data, the normals, the textures, and the faces. So pretty cool. We've just generated a cube that we can use later. Now, the other option is we can build it in Blender and save it. So here is a Blender file. I've just added a, a cube that is, if you look at the dimensions, it's 2 meters by 2 meters by 2 meters, which means it's going to have um, vertex positions of plus and minus 1. So it should match identically. Now, it's important when we save this, we do File, Export, and go down to Wavefront, and I'll save it into this file. It's very important, first of all, uh, limit the export to the selection only. We just want to export the cube in case you've got other things in your, in your scene. And it's important you go down to Geometry. And here we can select to triangulate faces. That's probably not selected. What we're going to want to do is triangulate faces because this .geo format uh, generates triangulated faces. So then we all we have to do is export that. And I'm going to call it triangulated cube. And that will save this as a triangulated cube that we can then import into um, our project. So now that we have our simple cube in OBJ and Geo format, so we can do a nice comparison. Uh, we're going to need a little bit of code in, to allow us to import OBJ files into our application. And there's a, a few of them out there. Um, I tend to use this one from GitHub by BLY7, and it's called OBJ Loader. There's also Tiny Object Loader, I think people use. Doesn't really matter, um, but this should work okay. Uh, and really, it's nice because it's just a header file. So you just download the header file and you should be good to go. So um, it's also got an example of loading and printing um, 
object file data. So we'll go to the source, objloader.h, and really all you got to do is um, copy the raw contents over here and save it as obj underscore loader dot h and bring it into our project and we should be all set and we can compare the obj loader dot h what that provides us with what the um, scratch a pixel dot geo um, importer provides us with and compare those two and try and get this obj loader to give the the same data that the geo gives us. So since our challenge is going to be um, making sure that the OBJ loader gives us the same data that is needed by the triangle mesh in our code, uh, we need to look at for our simple cube what data is there. So we can see that really they're both talk, both formats are talking about the same stuff, but we're going to have to make sure they're in the same format so that we can use the OBJ to go into the triangle mesh. So Basically, with our cube, you can see there's going to be eight vertices, right? Each vertex has XYZ coordinates with these arrows. So there's eight of these XYZ coordinates, which is a position. And each vertex is assigned an index number based on its position in the file. And we use indices because it allows you to reuse a vertex um, for multiple, to define multiple faces rather than just say um, to define a vertex by a position, you would have to repeat that position for each time you use the vertex, but here you can just refer to a vertex as a single uh, index number. So not only does it have a, a XYZ position, but it also has a index number assigned to it. So there's gonna be eight vertices with positions and index numbers, and it's going to have six faces. So each face is defined by the indices of the vertices that comprise the face, right? So I've got eight vertices, six faces, and I've got normals. So all six faces are going to have normals. Each face has an XYZ normal vector, which defines an XYZ um, coordinate. And each normal is assigned an index number, uh, same as with the faces. So with this simple cube, there's a lot of information and also, at the end of the day, all of these uh, four-sided polygons are converted into triangles. So each triangle is defined by the indices of the vertices that make up the triangle. So um, you can see we're going to also have to deal with triangles when we're importing an object into our ray tracing application. So at the end of the day, again, we're going to have to take all of this data in OBJ format and make sure it matches the triangle mesh format used by our application. So I think that's about it for this one. We're already at 18 minutes and I've learned over the last five years that nobody watches past the first four minutes of any video. So uh, what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to now um, take a close look at the triangle mesh object in our code and match that up to the input of the um, OBJ importer and um, see if we can replace the geo files with the OBJ files. So uh, if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.